Since the Boko Haram insurgency began, the Nigerian Air Force has been in the thick of action, conducting bombing sorties and providing ground support for service troops. Lately, with the acquisition of more platforms, there has been increased tempo of air operations with the Zucano jets, the Ageless Alpha jets, the MI-35 ground attack helicopters, and several others conducting numerous raids against the enemy in different parts of Nigeria. On Christmas Eve, I visited the Air Component Command, Operation Harding K, in Maiduguri, and met with the Air Component Commander, Air Vice Marshal Nnamdi Hananaba. The visit afforded me the rare privilege of having a close, personal, and intimate contact with Nigeria's elite warplanes. From AVM Ananaba's office, we went straight to the flight line. As expected, it was a very busy day, with various platforms taking off on missions and returning from missions. opportunity for me to interact with young pilots fighting for their fatherland and acquire more knowledge about the warplanes. My first port of call was the A-29 Tucano jet shed. The Tucano jets were bought for more than $600 million by the Buhari administration. After about four years of waiting, the jets are finally here and contributing immensely to the war on terror. How does it feel when you get into the cockpit of this amazing bed and begin to do your work for your nation? I feel very good and uh, delighted flying the 829 Sports Canoe. The fact it's a new machine and also has like the updated avionic system. Also the weapon delivery is perfect. So I feel very good and kind of job made easy. What an amazing warplane. Okay. It's meant for just a pilot, right? Yeah, both pilot, but since the combat mission, combat ready, the seat cover is placed for a single pilot to move, but if you have both pilots to go for it, you can pull off this and it joins yeah, behind. You actually have two pilots. Yes, yeah, you can have two pilots. Combat missions. Yes. Well, you can see that it's, it's very compact. Looks really the cockpit looks small, so the, the other pilot can sit here. Can sit here, yes, and also can also operate the aircraft from the rear. Wow. Oh yes, that's true. Yeah. As you can see, the other pilot can operate the aircraft from this sitting position. So the main pilot stays here. Sit here. Yes. Uh, has he been involved in night missions, night sorties? Yeah, we've been involved in night sorties. The aircraft is, has uh, night capabilities, so we're able to carry out operations at night. Yes. For you, when, when is the best time to fly? For Just me, a... the best time to fly for me, uh, it depends. Uh, preferably, you fly in the day because you have your, your sights are working, they are seeing the daylight. But for combat, it's better you fly at night. That's what this kind of enemy. Yeah, it's to achieve some um, surprise and also better impact on enemy. Yeah, yeah, you can assess the area using the flare pod that is attached to the fitted to the aircraft. The, let's talk about the weapon system, the munitions that you okay. deliver. What is the weight of the bomb that you drop? Uh, you have um, 250 pounds. Uh, 500 pounds. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot. Which can be carried on both wings. 
because the aircraft has five hard points. Yes. Fly Lieutenant Hago spoke about the qualities of the two canals. He appeals for patience from Nigerians as the war rages on. Yeah, to Nigerians, uh, they have to be patient with the Nigerian Air Force. Work is ongoing. The aircraft is doing its best since the induction into the Nigerian Air Force. The super to canal that Nigerians asked for has come is here. and is doing a good job in the Northeast, helping us to take out the veritable enemies of the Nigerian state. The Alpha Jet is one of Nigeria's most iconic mm -hmm. and resilient warplanes. It is very rugged. The French built warplane is used for both training and combat missions. Flight Lieutenant Y.S. Ahmed explains why the Alpha Jet is so irresistible. The Nigerian Air Force will basically use it for, to train pilots. After basic training, uh, you come on the Alpha Jet to get your limited combat training and thereafter start flying operationally for the Air Force. Um, here in, the, in Operation Harding Care, we conduct arm reiki, air interdiction, closer support missions, and also arm escort mission and we also conduct training here as well in theater. Uh, currently there's a pilot that is currently undergoing training and will soon be finishing uh, in, the, in, in about two weeks time hopefully. The Alpha Jet is very re reliable um, in terms of the firepower it can carry. Uh, you can see it carries the about 18 rockets on this side and 18 on the other side so that's about 36 rockets. Also has the capability of carrying bombs uh, on the uh, um, both inner and outer pylons and also the under pylons who can carry guns as well. So in terms of the ammo that the aircraft can carry, um, it can carry a lot. And also it's maneuverable and uh, it can achieve a lot in one mission. How much love does the Boko Haram terrorists have for this? I, I don't think they, they would love to see or hear the sound of this aircraft. When you are in the air and you are moving towards a target area, what do you see the terrorists do. Give me an idea of what you see the terrorists do. Mostly they don't see us coming, but for those that see us coming, uh, they have no option than just to run away from where they are. What is the weight of the, the bombs, bombs that this uh, player carries? For a mission, you, you carry about 500, so 250 on the left, 250 on the right as well. Suggest to us what we can use to replace it. As a young man who reads about um, um, war planes and the rest, what, what will come to your mind? Uh, first of all, the acquisition of the A-29 Spot Cano is a good acquisition. Uh, also, in terms of the role they play, it can substitute the Alpha Jet. Not entirely, but as well, they, they have the precision capa uh, capability. But if I'm being selfish and I say I want an aircraft I want to fly, in terms of what I've seen, uh, the Reputation. And the reputation of the aircraft, the F-16 is a very good aircraft. The MI-171E is a cousin to the battle-tested MI-35P, a multi-role helicopter. The MI-171 is a multi-role all-weather attack helicopter. As you can see, it is primarily designed for the movement of tacticals, manpower and destruction of ground targets. The aircraft has the ability to carry 18 fully kitted soldiers and 36 troops. The MI-171 has a unique capability of carrying various degrees of ammunition. As you can see, it's currently armed with 6 by 100 kg bombs, and it has the ability... These are 100 kg bombs? Yes, these are 100 kg bombs, yes. And it's armed with 6, we have 3 more on the other pylons. And it has the ability to carry 4 500 kg bombs, 2 on each pylon making it four, and it also carries 250 kg bombs. Wow. The MI-171 can also be armed with rockets. It carries various degrees of rockets ranging from S-8 rocket, C-5 rocket, and C-8 rocket. And it can also be armed with uh, cannons, with a 23mm Gesha gun port. It can be armed on the wings. The MI-171E is armor-plated to protect its crew in terms of combat mission, as you can see. It's fully armor-plated to protect its crew from ground fire, and it also has the yes, it has the armor plate inside to protect the pilots and also on the ground in terms of direct ground fire. Uh, the MI-171E also has and can fly for a range of 610 kilometers, and when fitted with external tanks, it can go at fast 1,200 kilometers, giving it an endurance of five hours. 
with an endurance of five hours, it eats patrol missions, armed reconnaissance missions in order to, to gather more intel. And the aircraft is operated by three crews, two pilots and one flight engineer. Let's, let's see what the, okay. the cabin going. looks like. In terms of medical evacuation mission, okay. the aircraft is capable of carrying 12 stretchers with five medi medi medical personnel on board. So we can arm it with five stretchers to treat the wounded. And also this is the cockpit of the MI-171. As you can see, it's very spacious. This is where the two pilots sit down, and this is the seat for the flight engineer. The MI-171 has a very unique feature. Yes. So this is where the captain sits down, the first pilot, and this is where the second pilot sits down. The MI-171 is also automated. This is our autopilot system, meaning it can fly itself. Wow. It can fly itself. You can actually program it, and the aircraft will fly itself. Autopilot. Yes. And this is our armament system, which we use. On top, this is the bomb, bomb armament system. Bomb armament yes. System which we use, and this is uh, the rocket armament system. Flight Lieutenant Wukanga is a pilot on another multi-role helicopter, the MI-35M. Tell us about your baby, your, your aircraft, okay. and why you enjoy flying it. Yeah, it's always a delight when I get to fly this aircraft because um, the helicopter is a very rugged um, and tested Russian machine, which was inducted into the Nigerian Air Force in 2016. Uh, this helicopter prim is primarily designed as a troop carrier. It can carry eight fully kitted troops in the cargo compartment. It can also be configured uh, to an ambulance configuration for medical evacuation and uh, casualty evacuation, and also for combat in support of ground troops. Here in the theater, we use it for air interdiction, um, close air supports, armed reconnaissance, as well as um, armed escort in support of uh, the surface forces in the fight against terrorism. Um, to achieve these roles, the helicopter is um, equipped with various munitions, uh, some of which are the uh, guided uh, missiles. It can carry eight of those missiles on the outer pylon to the right. It also can also fire rockets. We can, we can mount um, 20 rockets, rockets on this pylon. Yes, this is a rocket pod. The helicopter also has a gun, the Geisha 23mm gun, in the front. This is gun? Yeah, this is gun. And this gun is uh, incorporated with the camera, so you can fire the gun with the use of the camera. So this is where the pilot in command sits. Yes. You can also employ all the weapons from uh, here or the front cockpit. It was time for the A-29 Tucano to embark on a mission. The Alpha Jet was also being readied for battle. One after another, the helicopters and bombers climbed into the air for bombing missions. A delighted AVM Ananaba threw more light on the various platforms. What you have behind you here is the MI-35M helicopter. It's an uh, attack gunship. We call it a gunship because it uh, carries rockets, it carries uh, bombs. The rockets it carries, some of them are precision. 
while some are just the normal rockets. This plane is a very important airplane in the theater. We operate it both in the day and at night. So with it, any time of the day that the enemy comes, we can engage him with this airplane. You hear more about it when you come to talk to the what, what is the difference between it and the other airplane? Yeah, the difference is mainly with the weapon systems. Okay. While this has, I'll just give you one specific difference. While this has a, an optical camera, the 35P does not have. And uh, this also carries precision guided uh, rockets. But the MI-35P does not have precision guided rockets. Again, there are other mechanical uh, differences, for instance, the landing gears, configuration of the landing gears, and so on, that make the difference. But the airframe generally is the same airframe. The same so this is the MI this one here seven one E E yes. So basically it does the same job. Yeah it uh, it does very close uh, air support. Uh, this is more of a utility helicopter. Utility in the sense that it can carry cargo. Okay. So we use it for logistics, we supply both deep into enemy territory where the, the troops are and also between units within, uh, within the theater. Now, aside that, it is modified for attack as well. If you look at the airplane, you can see bombs mounted on the racks. So we also use it for bombs. bombing. Yes, these are bombs. You can also fit it with rocket pods such that it can fire rockets from the airplane. He is happy to have the ageless but very useful Alpha jet. Yes, it's been with us since 1984 and it has been very effective and it's still working. If you leave me, I will not let go of this aeroplane. Let me, let me hug it in your presence. <laughs> Beautiful aeroplane. Yes, the Alpha Jet. The Alpha Jet, doing a very good job. Resilient and ageless war machine of the Nigerian Air Force. Tell me a few things about uh, this uh, ageless. Yeah, it's, um, it's a light attack platform. Uh, when we bought it, or when we got it into the Nigerian Air Force uh, inventory, it was brought in as a, a leading fighter trainer to be used in the Air Weapons with Kaenji to train our combat pilots. But uh, it, it had a dual role of being a combat airplane and a trainer airplane. So we started using it as a trainer airplane. But when the conflict in Liberia started, we started to use it as an attack platform. It has both roles, but now Liberia made it, or made us deploy it fully as an attack platform. And since then, it has been the workforce of Nigerian Air Force, the workhorse of Nigerian Air Force for all our combat it operations. It remains very useful. It remains very, very useful. Very, very useful. So there is no plan to decommission it? No, I don't want it decommissioned. It's very good for me. I'll keep it there. It's going to take other platforms a very tough job to take over the role of this airplane. He also spoke on the F-7 supersonic jet and the JF-17 fighter jet recently acquired from Pakistan. The newly acquired uh, JF-17, uh, those have multi-role capabilities as well, but their primary role is for air-to-air. -air. Okay. Air-to-air, that is to say fighting against uh, incoming enemy threats yes, yes. through the air, but they can still be used for air to ground purposes. But their primary role is for air to air. So yeah, um, I guess right now we do not have a cause to engage enemy airplanes. As it is now, the conflicts we're involved in, none involves air combat with enemy airplanes. So that, that day could come. So. That day could come, yes, and that's why we have them. We always have to plan for the future. So getting those airplanes is to make sure that when the future war comes, we are prepared to deal with those challenges. To Air Vice Marshal Ananaba, the Super Tucanos offer new capabilities and possibilities. With the Alpha Jets, we don't have precision capability. With this airplane, you have precision capability. When I say precision, you can pick out a vehicle and strike that vehicle exactly without disturbing anything else around it. With this aircraft, it can search 
on its own. While the Alpha Jet will rely on another airplane to search, this airplane, you can zoom in on the camera there, that's, that's the camera under it there, it has the capability to search for targets on its own and engage those targets. So that is one, 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 one lapse we had with the Alpha Jets that this has covered up. If you look at the rocket pod, you will just see about uh, seven slots in there. Seven slots. On the Alpha Jets, you have 32 slots. Here you have seven slots. So what does that tell you? This airplane is meant to kill, to fire one rocket, one gun truck. So it doesn't need to carry too many. It's such it's a sure of it's sure of hitting its target. So that's a good thing we have about it. Keep it up there. It looks for its own target, finds its own target, it kills its own target, and uh, it's a beautiful machine. He's happy about the synergy between the armed forces and went on to address the concerns of some people that the Air Force is sometimes slow to respond to attacks by the enemy. There are so many factors that um, affect the response time. Some tend to look at response time as simply how quickly are you able to jump into your airplane, take off and get there. But there are other factors that come in. Let me use the scenario of a soldier in the unit who comes under attack. Firstly, he has to respond to that attack. After responding to that attack, he has to understand the scenario or understand the situation before he now starts to communicate his situation. All these takes a bit of time. All this takes a bit of time. Before that soldier responds to the attack, appreciates the situation, picks up his radio and starts to communicate, a bit of time has gone. Then now the information gets to the air component, and the air component starts to scramble. The pilot jumps up, he has to go pick his gear. The technicians have to run to the airplane. If it is out in the open, which we are usually out in the open when we are on alert, he has to prepare the airplane before the pilot comes in, gets in, straps in, then goes through the checklists of starting up the airplane. He starts, then he has to taxi out and then take off. And depending on where the attack is, it may be one that is just 10 minutes away, it may be one that is one hour away from the flight. All these are factored into the response time. And it cannot be the same. Sometimes weather is an issue. If the Air Force maintains absolute commitment, discipline, dedication to duty and continues to synergize its efforts with other security agencies. The victory over the enemy is assured. Baba Jidekola Deut Stojo, Maidugri, Bonastin.